The Honourable Member for Calgary Rocky Ridge. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, this government, Mr. Speaker, likes to boast about supposedly unprecedented consultation with Canadians. But, Mr. Speaker, exactly who did the Finance Minister consult before changing insured mortgage rules? I can tell you who he did not consult. He did not consult the mortgage or the housing industries. On February 1st, I attended the Standing Committee on Finance to hear witnesses discuss the effects that mortgage rule changes are having on their businesses, their customers, and Canada's many regional housing markets. One point was absolutely clear. None of them had been consulted. Here are some of the things that the Finance Committee heard that the Minister would have heard had he bothered to ask. He could have heard from many witnesses that the new rules will reduce competition, leading to higher interest rates and fewer options for Canadian consumers. He would have heard from Michael Lloyd of DLC Canadian Mortgage Experts that the new rules are, quote, not even effective in Vancouver and Toronto. You're bludgeoning everyone and it's not fixing anything, end quote. He would have heard from Paul Taylor of Mortgage Professionals Canada that, quote, the spin-off impacts of a reduction in purchasing power for the middle class could have the unintended consequence of actually creating the scenario that these policies aim to prevent, a national debt crisis caused by a significant economic decline, end quote. He would have heard from Stephen Smith of First National Financial that the insured mortgage stress test will, quote, reduce the affordability of housing for first-time buyers in the softer markets in, in the country, the prairies, Quebec and Atlantic Canada, and will have minimal effect on the overheated markets in Vancouver and Toronto, Toronto end quote. He would have heard from the President of Canada Mortgage Guarantee uh, Insurance that, quote, elevated housing market activity in Toronto and Vancouver is not and has not been driven by first-time home buyers. He would have heard from Bob Finnegan of the Canadian Home Builders Association that measures like the stress test can, quote, lock out otherwise qualified home buyers. They can cause a downward spiral on local economies. He would have heard from Sherry Donovan of the Nova Scotia Home Builders Association that a mortgage lender she knows in Newfoundland estimated that 25 to 30 percent of their clients would not qualify under the new rules. She would have told him that a Newfoundland home builder reported that he went from an average of 50 home sales between October and December each year down to zero sales for the same time period once the new rules came into effect. The minister could also have heard from the Canadian Home Builders Association that the cost of a home in Toronto has increased by $300,000 over the past few years due largely to government regulations, fees and taxes. And he would have heard that the, the crisis of affordability in Vancouver and Toronto were not caused by mortgage availability, but by lack of supply, largely due to government regulation. Mr. Speaker, did the Minister of Finance intentionally avoid consultations because he did not expect to like the answers that he would uh, find, that he did not want to hear about first-time homebuyers and young families, or about the folly of imposing a uniform national policy on diverse regional markets? Did he not think that the mortgage and housing industries expected to have a say, given that they were consulted on all five of the past mortgage rule changes over the past decade? For a government supposedly devoted to science and evidence, is it not hypocritical for the Minister of Finance to impose changes to the rules on mortgages without asking any outside experts in the field? For a government dithering aimlessly on a host of other issues in the name of consultation, it sure rammed through the mortgage rule changes, running over both the industry and consumers. The question, Mr. Mr. Speaker, is why? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance. Merci beaucoup, Mr. President, and I would like to thank you for having the opportunity to respond to this question. Mr. Speaker, the government fully appreciates the challenges faced by middle class Canadians and those that are working so hard to join it. This includes middle-class families' concerns over reduced housing affordability in some regions and taking on high levels of debt, reducing the likelihood that they will be able to, to afford their properties over the long term if economic circumstances were to change. Those who already own their homes, Mr. Speaker, want to know that the market is stable and that the most important investment that they've made in their life is safe. This is why that our government, Mr. Speaker, has been focused on housing issues since coming into office. We have taken a series of carefully targeted measures to ensure stability and to promote affordability. Effective since February 15, 2016, the minimum down payment of a new insured mortgage increased from 5% to 8%.
to 10 percent for the portion of the house price above $500,000. In October, the government made changes to the mortgage insurance rules and tax measures to help ensure that new home buyers are more resilient and that the principal res residence exemption is only claimed in appropriate cases. These measures are focused on addressing the buildup of housing debt across Canada. This includes markets such as Vancouver and Toronto that have seen significant house price increases, but also other areas of the country where buying activity is more modest, but new buyers are highly indebted. These measures will require borrowers and lenders to make adjustments in the short term and are expected to lead to a temporary reduction in the housing activity. But they are important in containing risk to preserve the long-term stability of the housing market, Mr. Speaker. The government is also committed to doing its part to fully understand the range of factors impacting regional housing markets. This is why that in Budget 2016, we provided funding to Statistics Canada to develop a method methodology for gathering data on purchases of Canadian housing by foreign home buyers. The Finance Minister also created the Federal, Provincial and Municipal Working Group of officials to review the range of factors affecting regional housing markets. Finally, the government is engaging on housing affordability to support the needs of our most vulnerable population. In Budget 2016, the Government of Canada spent $2.3 billion on affordable housing. It will continue to work closely with the provinces and municipalities on this file. My colleague, the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, is currently developing a housing strategy. We have seen in other countries what can happen to the housing market and economy when housing risks and the leverage are not appropriately managed. In these situations, it is often middle-class families who suffer the most, Mr. Speaker. It will take time before we can fully assess the impact of all of these measures, and the government is closely monitoring housing and mortgage markets across the country. Measures that ensure a sound and stable housing market and financial security for Canadian families are a part of the government's economic plan, which is based on the notion that when you have an economy that works for the middle class, you have a country that works for everyone. The series of actions that the government has taken over the course of the past year demonstrates our commitment to protecting the long-term financial security for Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Rocky Ridge. Well, Mr. Speaker, the government is, uh, is stating that it has, uh, that it's concerned about the affordability of housing for Canadians, and yet the measures they have taken have done absolutely nothing to address this issue in the pockets of concern that they've identified in Vancouver and Toronto. This is according to the experts that have uh, testified at the Finance Committee, and are yet taking the dream of home ownership away from a substantial number of would-be first-time home buyers in markets like Calgary, like Victoria, like uh, cities of southern Ontario outside of the GTA, uh, as well as, and especially Atlantic Canada, um, as was uh, uh, put very forcefully at the Finance Committee by, uh, by the Nova Scotia Home Builders Association. And Mr. Speaker, this is the same government that is running an absolutely out-of-control deficit, has in this House used low interest rates as a justification for doing so, and is yet lecturing home buyers about the risks of credit. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Investing in a home is the single and largest and most important financial decisions most Canadians will make in their lives. Home ownership is vital to the economic and financial health of Canada and middle class families. It is vital that what we do, that we do what we can to ensure that the market is stable and that we provide peace of mind to homeowners all across Canada. The government continues to work collaboratively to address housing affordability and stability issues. We are closely monitoring the impact of recent policy measures and are committed to addressing the overall health and stability of the housing market across Canada financial systems, and the economy. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.